Hello and welcome back to the Dragon Josh podcast. I'm Jacob. And I'm Trevor. And today we watched Who's Got Game. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you remembered the title because I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a solid episode. It was a good time, actually. It showed... I, yeah, out of, the, out of the episodes that we've seen of season four so far, I think I still like Tiberius more. This is a close second. Then I'm trying to think of the other ones. I think Tiberius is the best one so far. This one's good because it shows actual, like, a little bit of character development. Yeah, true. Because Josh has grown as a person. Which yeah, is he nice has. to actually see in this show. Because yeah. usually it's like, no one has changed in the past, like, what, three, four years. No, they really do show it. They show a good competition between him and, um, and Drake. Um, so, basically, the episode starts out with... Actually, before we start getting into the episode... Um, <laughs> so this is the first episode of a recording session. Yes, it is. Um, which usually means we are like one drink in or sober completely or completely sober. We started playing a game. What we was started it called? playing categories. Categories. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was an Abby suggestion. We had, we had just bought it. We had never played it before. Abby had, and she beat us in the end. She beat us pretty good. I was close. And then Trevor got third. He was also close. So it was all, it was close all together. Um, I wasn't that close, but you were close you. to me. I, I mean, was closer it, than I thought I would. All together, there was like a thirty-point gap. Yeah, which we was, also didn't play by the standard rules. We just kept going and then added all the score up at the end instead of like what two rounds is what the rules say. But screw that. Yeah, screw that. That's too quick. Um, also, this is the first recording session of probably our last time recording in the sunroom. So oh, the right. the area where we have recorded most of this podcast um, in my sunroom in my apartment. So um, the last time, well, the last recording session we'll probably have in this room. Yeah. So next time, because me and Abby are moving apartments, um, it'll be in a new room in its own room because we're getting a two bedroom instead of the one. It'll be in Trevor's bedroom. My room slash. <laughs> it's not your room. It's not my room, <laughs> but. Don't I'm get the, it wrong. He's not moving in with us. No. <laughs> as much fun as that would be, that would also be kind of weird. So I think it'd be weird for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's it's very bittersweet. This has been a dope little room that we've recorded, and you can see the wilderness through the windows. Which has been a distraction at times. Yeah. There's Whenever been... like a rabbit or a raccoon runs by, we're like, oh my God, look, it's a raccoon. Yeah, a lot of creatures. There's always creatures coming through. Um, and also... In the meantime, even though it's only been a couple weeks since you recorded last, um, Trevor, you went to um, New Orleans. I did go to New Orleans. How was it? It was a good time. Got Had a lot to drink on Bourbon Street. You got beignets. I got beignets. Uh, pro tip, go to Cafe Du Monde because it is the classic. But if you really want good beignets in a place that doesn't have near as much of a line, go to yeah. Cafe Beignet. It's right down the street. There's multiple locations. Uh, but the... One that we went to was right down the street from Cafe Du Monde, and those beignets were better. Honestly, yeah. like I know Cafe Du Monde is like famous, famous for their beignets, du but Mont. Cafe Beignet, man, in the Jackson Brewery like shopping center, hmm. it's not a brewery though, which is really sad because no? I was like, oh man, cool brewery, and apparently there's not a brewery in it. Huh? Weird. Why do they name it that? I don't know. Am I that used to have been a brewery? Oh yeah, an old like old fit where it but, used to be. Who knows? Anyways, Cafe Beignet was like really good. Hmm. And they had like, they serve alcohol in Cafe Beignet. They do not in Cafe Du Monde. <laughs> Cafe Du Monde, the menu I think has like seven items. The only food item is beignets. And Very specific. Everything else is coffee. You did bring us back coffee, which I'm excited to try. Uh, yeah, I did. Cafe Du Monde coffee. Yeah. In the little K cup pod yeah. things. Which we're still using for now. Abby and I are looking into an alternative at some point to switch to instead of the k-cups because they're bad for the environment well you could get the reusables yeah it's just the whole thing is kind of a struggle it'd be easier to just not use k-cups you could just throw a big pot and then go from there yeah they have some of them too that we were looking into to where they you can choose the setting to where it can be like like two cups or something like that instead of a full pot of coffee Mm. which is not bad that would be good because yeah you guys each have a cup in the morning usually yeah. and then mm-hmm. maybe one other cup and you can just go to one cup yeah, yeah there you go. um work. and also my schedule is going to be changing 
so I'm not going to be such a morning boy anymore. So hopefully these recording sessions will be easier to do. This is more of a back end thing. <laughs> this is definitely a back end thing. We have barely talked about the episode. We haven't talked about the episode. We Doesn't said matter. the title. It's only been a couple minutes. Usually we go on for like 20 minutes. Yeah, but so that'll be nicer because you'll be able to stay up late. And I am still like on a weird work schedule. Yeah. Hopefully that changes. Hopefully I'm, I get a real job. Are you going to be working more with the uh, reality show or no? Who knows? They've asked me to work, but I was in New Orleans last time they asked me to work. Hopefully that didn't ax the uh, relationship. Nah, right there. I told them I couldn't work a couple of times and they still keep asking. Then I went and did a gig, but it was you did gig. more than one. I've, I've gone down once for the two day thing. And then they did a recording up at, um, in Tampa that I was able to go to because it was a lot closer and mm. it was just for a day. So it was really easy. Yeah. Um, that was nice. So anytime they want me and I'm available, I'll go. But I just have a lot of times when they ask them either out of town or uh, working my other job, Hmm. which I feel bad about blowing them off for my other job. But also I'm already committed to that job. So it's like. Yeah, I feel like the reality show one's kind of cooler, though. It's cooler. (laughs) And depending on the day, it pays more. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, it pays more. It's better credit, too. It is a better You get IMDb credit. credit for it? You better. God, I hope so. That'd Might be nice. Might not, though. Probably won't, but Why that'd not? be cool if I did. Did you write your name down anywhere so they can remember it? Trevor Storch, best boy. It's on the paperwork I did before I started. There you go. And then it, whenever I put down what I want for lunch, my name's on that. Perfect. They're going to use that. That's, that's good paperwork. The lunch list. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we watched... Um, what's it called? Who's got game? Wait, do we don't have any more announcements? Before? I don't think so. That's pretty much all. I don't have any more announcements. I don't have do. any more announcements. No. Yeah. So who's got game is the episode that we watched. Um, and it starts out with um Drake and Josh. This is during the like cold open thing. Mm-hmm. They're doing like a little competition, and Drake is trying to see if he can paint a painting of abraham lincoln in a bikini and josh is trying to stack like a thousand cans of tuna or something like that a bunch of i don't think it was a thousand i think it was like a couple hundred cans of tuna into a pyramid a lot of tuna more a tuna lot than of you cans would of have tuna. more tuna can this family likes to buy in bulk they really do because of those cherries too yeah the ch- there was a huge jar of cherries later on um so they're trying to see who can do those activities quicker than the other and josh is about to win yeah, and Drake can tell. He's but like, "Damn it, he's about to win because of the technically time. Josh." I, I mean, uh, Drake should have won that. Drake was done because he was done. He didn't do anything afterwards. He just was like adding details. It's like he could have easily brought that down and been done, or and just been, screamed "Done, done," and then walked it down and been like, "Yeah, like here it is. I've been done for a little while. It's just I was adding details." But instead, he wanted to cheat. So what he did was he could look at the clock and be like, oh, man, Josh is probably about done. Yeah. Which also bullshit. Yeah, how would you know? And then he just jumped off of the coffee table in their room upstairs. Yeah, and then right when that happened, immediately Trevor just said bullshit. <laughs> yeah, because as soon as he jumped off, he knocked over Josh's can of tuna. They all fell. And this huge pain, which would have been stable. Well, you can see, though, he basically like punches through. Oh, really? Josh straight up punches through the base. I didn't notice that. Freaking, like, I guess uh, you could say that the jump freaked him out, but... Doubt no. it. Doubt it. Not an, uh, enough to knock off maybe the couple top tan cans. Yeah. Uh, but not enough for him to straight up just, like, gut punch through the fucking pyramid. Like, that was dumb. Yeah, Bullshit. no, I, I mean, that wouldn't have happened. But, um... I did like the painting of Abraham Lincoln, though. I would love that painting in my house. I don't know if Abby would approve, but I think it would be a great painting. I wonder if you could find it somewhere. You could probably. Well, I wonder. Hey, Abby, do you could do a little googling for us? <laughs> um, Thank you, Abby. We love you. So then the next scene goes into um, this is after the credits. Yes. It goes to the premiere, where um, Josh is working. And he sees a hot girl. He notices a lady he likes. Yes. And he immediately, for some reason, needs to go tell Josh. Drake. Or go tell Drake about it. Also, Gavin is there. Gavin says that there's a hippie in theater, one of the theaters, washing yeah. his feet. Yeah. And Which, Helen wants him out. Why is he washing his feet in a theater? He's got to do it somewhere. 
It's not a source of water. <laughs> like the bathroom. He brought his. He brought like a like a little tub. I guess, but like I could see him doing it in the bathroom, in a public fountain. There's so many other places to wash your feet other than a movie theater. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But it's, it was funny though. He just wanted to get kicked out. Um. Yeah. So then Josh goes over and talks to Drake, who is like in the middle of telling a story. Which you say you know the rest of the story or no? I feel like that story is also the same as another story he's telling in another episode, and somebody wrote what the rest of it is. So it's like the Game of Thrones thing where Tyrion is always starting the joke where he brought a, a what is it, a honeycomb and a jackass into a bar or whatever. Yeah, something like that. And it never actually finishes. <laughs> yeah, he never finishes a joke like like three different times. So that's like the end of the joke. It's like a, a Drake and Josh did it first, though. Can yeah. we all say it? <laughs> but, well, they did the opposite where Drake is like at the end of the joke. Yeah. And we never hear the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I think somebody wrote the beginning. I don't know for sure, though. Um, this is so then, really good content, me saying. I think there's a beginning, <laughs> but I don't know. So then Drake, um, he sees the woman, and he's like, oh, yeah, she is hot. Thanks, man. And then he starts to, he wants to go over there and talk to her. And Josh is like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going to ask her out. And then Drake is just like, oh, that's cute. You know, he thinks that Josh can't do it. And Josh is like, what if I want to ask her out? And then Drake is just like, yeah, I think she's more of my speed, homie. It's and like, then so they, dick, so they the get in a little bit of a spat. But then Drake Drake's runs. Like, well, I mean, if you really, and then takes off. Yeah, he jumps over like the railing and gets to him real smooth, very smooth, very smooth. He's um, a smooth guy. Yeah, he just jumps over the railing. He's like, "Hey, I'm Drake. What's up?" <laughs> and he's like, "So I was thinking." And then Josh just straight up tackles him, like really, really high in the air tackle. <laughs> just like his body is completely off the ground. Just boom. Um. Yeah, my note was great tackle. It was a good tackle. Um, and then after that, uh, Josh starts introducing himself and then Drake tackles him. <laughs> and these girls are just like, oh my God. Yeah. And they get in a fight and then this old lady just stomps her cane and tells him to stop. Josh is doing his classic, like, I like picking out Drake. Like, yeah, just lifting him up. That sounded awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to see my next note. What were you saying, Trevor? Uh, yeah. So the lady is a boss and is just like hey stop it and then they just immediately stop for some reason yeah and then they get back to the house um and they're still fighting about this and um i forget which one comes up with the idea but they come up for the i, th- I think it's josh right josh comes, comes, up, the comes up with the idea for them to have a competition to see who can have who can get the most dates in a week yes and so he calls megan in because he like drake makes fun of him like yeah sure okay yeah, he's like that's pretty cute um loser yeah nerd and then megan he josh calls megan in because he wants a witness to this bet and they bet that whoever can get the most dates in a week and yeah. each date has to be an hour long can't be somebody you already know there was one other thing i cannot remember i don't know i don't remember those rules but they are good rules. They were pretty good rules. <laughs> uh, and whoever, if Josh wins, he gets Drake's cool bed. Yeah, and then if Drake wins, Drake gets Josh's perfect attendance award, which just, he just wants because it'll hurt him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> which, you know, sometimes that's all you can go for. Yeah. Go and for then the pain. I do have one quote written down, and Josh says, I never give up before I embarrass myself. Oh, that was a good line. When uh, when he's calling in Megan and Drake is like, just quit before you embarrass yourself. <laughs> uh, there's some good cl- like classic lines in this, I feel like. Yeah, I liked that one a lot. Uh, so, um, and then he immediately runs out of the room when they put the bed is on and he falls down the fucking stairs. Still in his vest from work, which it's like, dude, if you're going to go out to try and immediately get girls, put on some nicer clothes. Like, come on. Yeah, he really should have. Um, so then they go out to a record store, new record store. Never seen this record store before. Nope. And Drake, or Josh, I guess it's a CD store, not a record store. Cause they were all the CDs that were in those long boys. Yes. But I think it's still technically still called a record, called store. A record store because it's like, I mean, it's still a record. Like it's on a CD, but it's like, I guess that's an album. Yeah. I, when I think of record stores, I think of like actual records. I guess it is a C, a music shop, music shop, music shop. Um, uh, Josh <laughs> comes down the stairs yelling back up the stairs because this record or music shop is like downstairs, like almost like a basement kind of deal. Yeah, it's in some sort of basement area. I'm not really sure how this works because it's like not. I, when I was in California, I feel like I saw something similar to that. Really? 
but not that exactly. But like, I feel like the mall that we went to, hmm. me and Jesse, had like some weird downstairs stores in it. But also, I could be totally wrong. Yeah, it was very bizarre because it wasn't like downstairs outside. It was like downstairs inside. No, but it was downstairs it was, outside. It, it seems too clean to be outside. I thought it looked outside because of the light. Because it was like it was like fancy like stainless steel metal stairs. And it was like, it was like clean, it was like clean concrete on the ground. It was too clean. Yeah, Yeah, but it's also a TV set. Yeah, I feel like they just could have made it look more outside and trashy. TV, I feel like only gets it either super clean or like over the top dirty. Like if they had gone with the more worn look, they probably would have overdone it and it would look like a homeless place. Maybe. uh, I mean, I don't know. So, Um, yeah, so they enter the record store. Josh is calling back upstairs like, I'll give you a call. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I got a number, and Drake's like eleven. <laughs> no, she forgot to finish it. Forgot. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, and then Josh immediately starts harassing some woman in the in the CD store, uh, or whatever you want to call it, music shop. Is that what we ended shop. on? Yeah, <laughs> in the music shop. Just call it a, whatever you want to call um, it at this point. Yeah, he starts harassing her. He's like, "Hey, you want to go out and get like a burger or something?" He's like fucking him with like this little light. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, "I'm vegetarian." <laughs> yeah. Like, and then oh, later on, when they cut back to him, he's like, "Maybe some ice cream," and she's. He's like, I'm lactose intolerant. I don't believe you. <laughs> and he like chases her up the stairs. I know. You got to eat something. <laughs> Which it's true. I mean, come on. But also like get the hint, dude. Um, And while this is happening, Drake is um, succeeding hit- in winning over this, this girl that works at the store. Honestly, she hit on him though. She did. She definitely hit she on him. She made the first move for sure. She was like, oh, good choice because he picked up a CD. Yeah, and it was some band that was probably, I think, fake. Splinter or something like that? Some crazy band. Something with an S. Um, Uh, And she was like, I was at their concert. And he was like, oh, me too. And she was like, you were the guy listening, weren't you? (laughs) And he was like, that was me. (laughs) She's like, no, you idiot. No, I was just kidding. Um, And yeah, so then he asks her out while while he's checking it out. Because she's like, she makes another joke, and kind of a dumb one. She was like, it's going to be 900 and something dollars. And he's like, how about 10 bucks and you come listen with me? Which was a good line. It was a very good line. That was a good pickup. They were playing off each other really well. They were. There was a lot of chemistry going on. Mm -hmm. Um, So So he gets on a date with her. And then they cut. I think they cut straight to the house where they're on their little date. And they're listening to his music. Yeah. And um, she starts playing a chord progression from the song, and she's, she's like, like, "Oh I, shit, you I play fucking that guitar!" Part. And she was like, "Yeah." Um, so then they go to tie cherry stems. Yeah, in their mouth. Where do they get the cherries from? They just had the bowl in front of them. They just had a bowl of cherries. I think it was a bowl I of like cherries. cherries. I like cherries. Maraschino? You don't like maraschino cherries? Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, they're so good. Not a big cherry guy. That's fair, but I also usually you're take wrong. them out of the milkshake and put them, or I give them away. Or I'm like, have a cherry. I would take them. You, I think you do take them. I like, if, the I mean, we haven't been. To we be went, fair, we haven't been to Steak and Shake in a decade. It, I don't think it was a like, like three years maybe. It was a while ago. I mean, we've been out of college for two years now. It was probably in Gainesville. I, wanna, I mean, definitely it was in Gainesville. I want to say where else would like it? I've never been since I've gone out of college. I want to say it was that time when when I got it from the drive through. Um, when we are setting up before recording um, Human Under Bot. You know You what? remember that? Vaguely, yeah. I drove your truck. <laughs> you did drive my I drove, truck. I was, was, I, I, think, was I intoxicated? No. I, you were doing something. You did could, I just say drive my truck? Probably. I think so, because I didn't drive. As she drove me. Because um, we, we were at Jesse's apartment, and you were still you were doing production design stuff. And I yes. wasn't doing anything except for hanging out, because I was just doing sound on that movie. Yeah. So I was like, I'll go get fucking burgers. It was late as hell. I was so tired. <laughs> I gave you my truck. That's right. Yeah, it was dope. I totally forgot I gave you my truck that night. Yeah, yeah. I went and drove your truck. It's a good tr- I miss that truck. Yeah, it was a classic old truck. Miss it. It was a good time. Maybe I'll get a small truck. You should. Maybe. I can Whatever give you the VIN number to my old truck and see if you can track it down. That'd be crazy. That'd be cool. Um, That'd be really cool. <laughs> so yeah, they're tying cherries. Um, and Josh is watching them like a creep. Uh, um, and Drake, through a little kitchen window. Yeah, Drake gets uh, the cherry tied first. Yeah. Like half a second, a second, whatever. He's like, I got it first. She's like, only like a second. He's like, well, I'm a second better kissing at you than you. 
Fuck, yeah, um, and then Josh oh. is like making fun of him after he closes the little window. He's like, "I'm gonna kiss on you," and then he, he looks at the, the jar of cherries and he starts doing one, which was a giant, like those big ass pickle restaurant jars. Restaurant style. Those yeah, those restaurant style pickle jars, yeah. just full of cherries though. But Josh starts making the craziest faces as he's trying to tie it, um, and then uh, he starts choking on the fucking cherry because he just threw it into his mouth. And the uh, the mom comes in. Can never remember her name. The mom comes in. Uh, what's her name? Audrey. Aud- Audrey. Audrey comes in and gives him the Heimlich. Or no, she just starts pounding on him. Yeah, she literally just smacks him in the back of his spine. And she's like, did I hurt you? I'm sorry. He's like, no, just my spine. Yeah. So he coughs it up. And then he starts talking to his mom about picking up chicks. And she's like, I don't agree with this, like... Using women as point systems, which fair. Yeah, but he's like, he's like, no, nah, I'm just trying to prove a point, which is also doesn't fair. change it. <laughs> he he's not objectifying women. He's well, he kind of is. The women aren't the points. The dates are the points. Yes, because he goes out with a really old woman, so it's like he's literally just doing any method he can. Yeah. So, so she teaches him how. She's to like, I'm do gonna teach you how to pick up girls, and he's like, that's kind of pathetic. My mom's teaching me how to pick up girls, and she's like, are you coming? He's like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to the premiere and the mom's advice is basically just like go over to the girl, compliment her, and then walk away. Which not walk away. not the worst advice. Weird advice. So then um he walks over to the girl and tries out this method. Right. And he uh basically he's like, Hey, what's up? And she's like I don't even know what she said. She like blows him off. And then he's like, I'm Josh. She's like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I like your shoes. And she's like, whatever. And then so he's like, cool, right, see whatever. Ya. And he walks away and he looks fucking pissed and drained. He and looks then, so sad. He looks very sad. And then she's immediately like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. She's like, where the fuck are you going? And he's like, okay, first of all, no. Yeah. He's like, he's like, what? And she's like, What's you, up? you just walked over and caught on my shoes. I thought you were hitting on me. He's, he's like, like, yeah, I thought they were cool shoes. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you want? She's like, I thought. And, he's like, and she's nah, like, maybe I'm we not. should hang out. Here's my number, you silly bitch. And, and then he like, looks at it. Right. He's like, oh shit, all seven numbers. <laughs> she's like, what? He's like, nothing. So he scored a number for I think the hottest chick on this episode. On this, sh- on not the, the show. On the episode for sure. For the episode, definitely. For the show, nah. Close though. <laughs> she did have kind of a strange sweater on. Ah, yeah, no, nah, it was a nice green sweater. Yeah, it was nice. Um, I wrote down good one. I don't know what that fucking means. I'm going to, Oh, I think during this time, um, Gavin gets his perm. Oh, right. Yeah. Gavin gets a perm. And, <laughs> but this is later on though. Is I, it the later good, on? The, the good one reference is later on, oh, but now okay. I know what it is. I drew an arrow to it. So I remember, um, that's just my next note. Cause I have the, no way that would work. Yeah, no. Is- so jo- this is right when Drake goes into, he, he goes to the premiere and he's, this is right after Josh had picked up the chick. And he was on his way to pick up chick number two. Yeah. And Drake is like, hold up. I want to call wanna, off the bet. Yeah, he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I found a chick who's great. The record store girl. Yeah. he's or like music he's, shop. He's like, we hung out all yesterday and today. I'm loving it. She's dope. And Josh is like, you're being a bitch, dude. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to win. I'm winning. Like, yeah, he's like, on. you're scared. And Drake's like, no, I just, I don't want to call off. And he says, like, the vet again for yeah. no reason. Right when she walks into the premiere. Right, right behind him. And uh, she gets pissed off. She's like, I'm a bet? What the fuck? Yeah, mm. so she storms off, leaves. She's like, I hate you, Drake. Um, Drake's pissed, obviously, as you But would. he doesn't blame Josh. No. We don't get the usual drama of, like, I can't believe you did this to me. Yeah, he blames himself. Yeah, which. Uh, which is fair. Um, so... I think the next scene is Drake going to the store with Eric and um, Craig. No, he goes before that to talk to her in his like blazer and is like, I can be honest and just insults a bunch of people. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, your head shaped like a lemon. You smell weird. You have bad taste in music. <laughs> yeah. I totally got those out of order, but still. Yeah. He insults a bunch of people and she's like, that's, she's like, that's not being honest. That's just rude. So then, then it cuts to Josh on his montage of dates. Yeah. Drake literally goes outside and is like, I bet Josh is on a montage of dates right now. And he is. And he is. <laughs> he goes out with the pretty normal girl who just laughs a lot. Yeah. Uh, the goth girl. And then an old woman who he pours cola into her IV. Which would have killed her probably. <laughs> Straight away. Because that's carbonated. Like, yeah. 
those bubbles would straight up kill her. And then, yeah, it would have got air in her veins. Yeah. She would have died. And then... Um, Goes out with some girl who just kissing girl. really wants to make out a lot. Which is cool. Which... But very aggressive. She was very aggressive. I appreciate. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> um, and then the old lady, like, knocks her out um, and she's at like, the end of that. She's like, what the fuck are you doing with my man? <laughs> Uh, there's also part of the montage, uh, him and the old lady, like, take a bunch of photo booth photos. They do. <laughs> and he one of them, he's, hug. One he of them he's got, like, her glasses on. <laughs> Remember, he tries to hug her and, like, just hugs the IV and on accident. Yeah. It's like, how do you do that, man? Come on. And then after that, it cuts to the, the CD shop scene when he's there, when Drake's there with Craig and Eric. Craig and Eric, he's like, all right, we're, f-. She, they're like, we don't feel comfortable doing this. He's like, aren't we friends? And they're and like, they're I like, don't know, are we? <laughs> You didn't invite us to your birthday. He's like, you didn't invite me. He's like, yes, I did. You <laughs> ate my fudge cake and took a nap in my bed. <laughs> That's fucked. Can you imagine one of your friends just coming over and falling asleep right in your bed? <laughs> like, unless they're drunk, there's not. That's not a reason. Doesn't for that. sound like it though. No, he just ate a fudge cake, um, which sounds delicious. Uh, but you then, get a fudge cake. So then they start doing their little um, acting scene, where um, Craig, Craig drops his wallet on the ground. Eric picks it up. Yeah. And it's like, Drake, look, I found a wallet and it's got a load of cash in it. Yeah. Let's keep it. But he says it weird. He's like, cash. Cash. Because <laughs> they're the way they're doing their acting is hilarious. It's like so fucking it's bad. Very, I feel like that's the only way for people who are already acting to do it extreme. To do to show that somebody else is acting. Yeah. Because otherwise you're just playing a different role. Like, and there's ways to act while acting and apparently that's one of the hardest things to do it seems hard as fuck but like playing it up i feel like everyone does it the same way which is hey drake yeah look at emphasizing weird parts of the sentences <laughs> for it's sure like definitely a way it's to all act. about the emphasis too much emphasis um so drake goes over and he um he calls out the name he's like is there a craig ramirez here which is like what? <laughs> His last name is Ramirez. He's like a white dude. He's a very white dude. <laughs> um, so then, which fair, I guess. I mean, whatever. Could but. be. So then, Craig takes the wallet, and they all just stand there awkwardly looking at each other, and then While they the finally girl, leave. The record store girl is just behind Drake. CD store, music store, music store, <laughs> music shop. Girl is behind Drake, just kind of looking at this whole scene, like fucking really. Yeah. Um. So then. Drake turns around. And he's like, "Oh, you're here. You're here. What are you doing here?" It's not like she works there. Yeah, and she's basically just like, "That was fucking pathetic." She's like, "That's you tried to trick me into thinking you were honest." And he's like, "Is that bad? <laughs> Is that a bad thing to do?" So then I don't remember what happens with Josh next, but they um, Drake goes to the premiere to prove that he's an honest boy. Yes. Um. So they're at the premiere, and he's got a whole crowd of people. Oh, Abby's going to pick the pizza up. Bye, Abby. Hey, Abby. <laughs> um, so there's a whole group of people there, and uh, Drake is just like calling out things. He's like, he's like coming forward with things that he's done that he he tells didn't his come forward with or blamed on other people. Fifth grade math teacher, science, science teacher that he put a bunch of gerbils in the back of his car. The guy's just like, I knew it. <laughs> he tells Craig and Eric that he was the one that spread the rumor about Craig. No, yeah, yeah. Craig. Craig, um, sh- showering in his bathing suit. That's so fucked. Uh, not Eric. It's so fucked. Which also, how did he know about that? It's ridiculous. I don't know why. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna bash the guy for I'll doing that. I'll bash him. That's weird. That is weird. But also, like, he seems like someone who might have some psychological issues. If he's Damn uncomfortable dude. with his body, then that's fair. Like. Um, I'm not going to bash someone for being uncomfortable with their body and doing what they can to stay hygienic. Right on. I wonder if he has a specific bathing suit, though, just for showering. Probably, just like shower sandals. Oh, that's weird. You know? (laughs) Um, And there's also this crazy old lady who I guess he uh, blamed Josh for hitting her mailbox. But actually, why would she ever think Josh did that? (laughs) He's like, thanks. And then he told Josh that even though they fight, he loves them. And he uses his toothbrush every day. Yeah, so he starts like Josh starts like rubbing his teeth with like, a napkin. Which nice. I was worried that a paper cut was gonna happen. <laughs> um, and he oh he also tells Gavin that he that put he, the gum in his hair. Yeah, and his Gavin perm. had gotten a perm this episode, 
And then Gavin just like, good one. <laughs> Which was really funny. Because <laughs> it's so sarcastic. It's true. About it's it. like, yeah, fucking good one, Drake. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, then the girl is like, okay, I see what you were doing. Yeah, and, she's like, I see you're honest. And yeah, I like you. Yeah, she takes him back. They give a, they do a big kiss. Yeah. And um, Josh goes over and he's like, well, I guess I won because I got 22 dates this week and you got one. And he's like, all right, fine. You win. You get my bet. He's like, I won. Look out, world. Yeah. <laughs> Josh is no longer a caterpillar. <laughs> he's a beautiful butterfly. He starts flapping his wings and everyone's just looking at him. He like, looks around and then he just leaves. Fucking leaves. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's pretty much the episode. And then it goes to the, to the credit sequence. No, um, yeah, it goes to the credits. No, cause the credit was the second half of that next bit. The next bit where they are sleeping in their beds and Josh wakes up at 3 AM to go get a glass of water and just walks off of Drake's bed. Cause they switched. At this oh, that point. wasn't a part of the credit. The credit was um, oh, the, okay, a continuation no, of that about, yeah. scene. So yeah, Drake or Josh is now in Drake's bed and Drake's in Josh's bed. Yeah. They didn't switch sheets or anything. Nothing. Which is kind of weird. Only his special pillow. Only the pillow. Which they didn't even switch back. Yeah. The, cause, so Josh wakes up and is like, man, I'm thirsty. Yeah. Gets up. Why didn't he have water up there? <laughs> yeah, if you get thirsty in the middle, I guess. I keep water next to me at night. I don't keep water next to me, but I also don't get thirsty in the middle of the night. Mm. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, he gets up and just walks straight off yeah it's a great fall just walking on air and then just collapses straight onto the ground all the way from drake's bed who's which is like pretty high up yeah probably like four feet up and just down hits it hard um and then drake he wakes up and he's like want to (laughs) switch yes so they switch beds um and then we go to the well they go to the after credits that like, was the after credit, right? During the, the after the credits was when scene. Drake gets up and helps Josh get up. And then Josh stumbles around. And then they're like, good night, back in their respective beds. Yeah. Um, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, that was it. It was a Dece episode. Do I have any other notes? I don't have any. I crossed out all mine. Oh, I should start crossing mine out. No. That's um, it. Uh, the record store girl was really cool. That was one of my notes. She was chill. She was really She's cool. I liked chill. her streak in her hair that changed almost every scene. Um, Although one of did. the scenes she did not... I think that was a clip because one of the scenes she straight up did not have a coloration. Yeah, she had red, blue, and purple at different times. But also none at one point. Um, so who do we want to shout out? We should shout out... Probably the actress, right? What was her name? I feel like this is her that I'm trying to... That Looks is, like it. Is that? Yeah, that... that girl. Oh, that is her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brittany Curran. Brittany Curran. She did a good job. It's Carly. That was her name. Scroll down. I wonder if that's where they got the name iCarly for. <laughs> Probably not. Um, oh, wait. Who is the director? Can you scroll up? Because I think it was a different director. Um, um, Adam Wiseman. I think we talked about him before. He's been the last few episodes. And writing credit, Ethan Barville. I thought it was Banville. I can't see it from here. That's an A. It might. Yeah. You think it, you mean it's an N? Well, you said Barville, and I think it's Banville. Yeah, I know, but then you said I think it's an A. Yeah, because you said this was an. <laughs> you mean R. N? No, because you said Bar- uh yeah. Um. <laughs> so I can't read. <laughs> Scroll down. We got Larry Lee, prop maker. Mike Karen, second assistant director. Good job, Mike. And Terry Penske, first assistant director. Good job, y'all. Um, so what do you rate this out of 10 qualers? Oh, I had a good time. I'm going to give this one actually a solid eight. Nothing was frustrating. It was just pretty good. So actually, 8.5 out of 10 qualers. Right on. I'm going like to give it. it a six. Wow. <laughs> It was I, it was fine. That's the most difference we might have ever had. I no, really, probably not. I had a good time with this one. The physical comedy was good. The yeah, was actual right. plot was pretty decent. It was fine. Didn't laugh out loud too many times. That's my problem. That's I ba- fair. I based that purely off of uh, my rating. Is my rating is based off of the laughing. You laughed out loud during the fall, though. I did, but that was at the only time. Um, so I no, gave it a six. The so, perm you laughed out loud as well. 
So between the six and the eight point five, what do we got? Was that like a seven point two, point two five? Yeah, I think around there for the combined rating. Okay. Um, what did you you gave it a six point five? No, I gave it. You a, do not need to do the math. Trevor. I'm gonna do the math. He's gonna do the math. Unfortunately. Va- vamp, vamp for time. What? Vamp. What does that mean? It means like say stuff so it does. We don't have dead air. I don't have anything else to say. I don't know why you're pulling up your category. There he goes. Um, what'd you, what? What did you give it a six? Yeah, six. I don't know what I did wrong the first time. I got 11, which doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, 7.25. You got it. Yeah. Seven and a quarter. Because the math wasn't that hard. <laughs> I am not good at math. <laughs> right on. Um, so that's pretty much the episode. I had a really good time with this one. Yeah, it was all right. Um, um, not sure what the, ex- the next episode is. Um, oh, it's the, the Magician. Oh, right, yeah. The um, Mr. Something. It's like a, a playoff of Harry Houdini. Yeah. Um, so The Great Doohini. The Great Doohini. Don't, well, I don't remember it being. I vaguely movie. remember this one. Um, I think that, this is the one in the opening credit sequence where Josh is in that like sequined unitard. Mm. I think this is this episode. Might be. But you guys will have to see next time. Yeah. Um, but I've been Jacob. I've been Trevor. Go watch some Drake and Josh.